So as I was saying, you don't just go in the network and you say, okay, what assets do I have? I have printers, IP phones, web services, users, computers, laptops, smartphones, etc. And then you go ahead and provide the same level of security for all assets. This is not what you have to do. Of course, small companies go ahead and either develop, put in place no countermeasures or put in place, let's say, common countermeasures, which in general, they end up investing money in something which doesn't offer any benefit at all. But that's not a story. But like, you know, medium and large companies, they do a risk analysis. So they basically, they have to understand which countermeasures have to be applied to which assets to defend them against which vulnerabilities and they don't we don't they don't implement the same level of security to all kind of assets because it doesn't make sense it doesn't make sense not only for from the technical point of view but also from the investment point of view so the, the risk analysis, it is required always, it's always gonna be done by medium and large companies and allows for a correct cost to value ratio for possible countermeasures. And in the, that allows the organization to be able to invest more uh, where the case is needed. Like if the organization has, let's say $3 million a year to invest in network security, then doing a risk analysis uh, with the proper risk analysis the proper way is going to show them that hey in this specific region of the network or for this specific assets we need to provide a, a level of security of 80 percent for the other assets we need to provide a level of security of 20 percent so then we're going to divide this those three million dollars in 80 percent being targeted towards uh, the, the assets which have to be better secured, which are classified as confidential, for example, and then the remaining 20% to the other assets, which are the ones which are, let's say, private, for example. So it is, this analysis is, is, is always required, and it's always being done in medium and large companies, because otherwise, otherwise, not only you don't know what you have to invest and where, but also you don't have a um, an input at, of how much could you should you invest so i hear this a lot from a lot of companies saying that we let's say when when i was doing consultancy i with my ex company i was going there and saying hey in order to defend yourself you let, let's say we were, we were telling them you have to provide a network access control solution uh, to to um, let's say control differentiated network access for different people and different endpoints, and let's say the total cost of that solution, which was Cisco's identity services engine, for the number of employees that the 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 customer had, it was let's say five hundred thousand dollars, so half a million, and then the company said, oh, that's too much. That's because they had had never done a risk analysis. Like, how can you state that half a million investment is too much in order to defend billions of dollars worth it in your assets, for example? Those two are not comparable, right? To invest a half a, half a million dollars, it, it, it's wrong and it's too much to invest half a million dollars to protect something which is worth $100,000. But to invest half a million into some in order to protect uh, billions uh, of dollars, that's not too much. That's actually too less. And for the risk analysis to be performed, there are two methods which are commonly, commonly used. We have what is called quantitative-based quantitative method, which is based on mathematical algorithms. And this is always used, I said in general, but it's always used. As I was saying, by looking, by losing asset X, the company knows it's going to lose up, for example, $5, billion, $5 million, which means the possible countermeasures, if, if the possible countermeasures cost $400,000 and it reduces risk by 80%, we're going to go ahead and do that. So that's mathematical uh, method for risk analysis. But always, uh, so each, each company is always going to deploy both a quantitative method and a qualitative method for risk analysis. 
Now the qualitative method is is more subjective and it's basically used when the quantitative assessment is not possible, like a natural disaster or a terrorist attack. Like if, if, if with, the, with the quantitative measurement, you can state that if we lose this specific asset or the specific data, which is vulnerable to this specific attacks, and to counter to to stop those attacks, we have to implement this security technologies, which is which is going to cost us this amount of money. This is all numbers. It's all mathematics, and you end up doing that or not doing that, based on which security level you want to achieve. You're going to invest more or less. But in, in the cases of, for example, a terrorist attack or a natural disaster, you never know the level of involvement, how much damage can that produce, right? So like, for example, if on a terrorist attack, how can you know if, you know, they're going to attack you and, for example, they're going to take down all of your data centers or they're going to take down one data center or gonna, they're going to take down portions of the data center, right? And in some cases, there are, as I was saying, because in all cases, you end up with a risk of being, with a risk which is accepted. Like take the use case of all data centers being attacked at the same time, okay? Well, n nobody's going to take any kind of measures against that specific use case. Okay, so basically you're gonna you're gonna make sure that the the data is safeguarded and you have copies of the data in different locations, like in three, four, five, six, seven locations, depending on the uh, sensitive uh, level of, of that data. But you never take into account that it, it's possible that somebody is gonna is gonna attack all of your all of your sites at the same time, bring them down at the same time, and delete the data at the same time. You never take into account that. You have taken that into account by using multiple locations to store the data, but then there's nothing you can do about a possible attack that can ruin, can attack all of your sites at the same time. And even if you would, it's gonna cost way too much in order to defend against that kind of attack. So for those use cases, for the, for specific use cases, when you cannot quantify, uh, when you cannot quantify, like what is the impact of a specific attack, and against which assets can that happen, and then you cannot impact also the risk level, then in those cases you do a sub qualitative qualitative analysis, which is ba basically very subjective. Um, it's, it's subjective, it's no good based on numbers.